Hi Sagittarius, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for July. July is going to be a dramatic month for all of us Sagittarius and for you in particular it's going to have an awful lot to do with money. We've got two eclipses coming up this month and a Mercury retrograde period. The eclipses are going to be across your money axis. Now what the heck do I mean by that? I'm talking about two areas of your chart that have to do with money, both your money and the money that you share with others or with larger entities such as taxes and insurance. <clears throat> so in the beginning of the month, on July 2nd, we've got... A, an eclipse in the sign of Cancer and this is going to be a solar eclipse. Now the meaning of an eclipse is that it shows you your shadow. It makes you look at things that are behind you that you don't look at every day that maybe you'd really rather bury. So during an eclipse those sorts of things tend to come back to haunt you. A solar eclipse in particular which is also by the way a new moon is a situation where uh, the sun and the moon are in a conjunction and this one falls in your eighth house which is the house of sharing and intimacy and sharing takes three forms it is physical it can be emotional and it can be financial so be aware in all three of those areas for some drama to occur where you're forced to look at your shadow due to events that other people can see. That's the nature of a solar eclipse. Now a lunar eclipse is going to happen later on in the month on the 16th and that will occur in the sign of Capricorn in your second house and a lunar eclipse is more emotional. I've heard it called an emotional roto-rooter. It really stirs things up. Second house is the house of things that belong to you. Your possessions, your money, also your body and the food you put into it. All the things that have to do with security. Now uh, experiencing an eclipse in that house is going to stir up a lot of emotions in those areas and make it really hard to think clearly about those things. So you might find yourself retreating to a place of like hyper security this month. Um, so watch out for that and uh, and see if you can get through the couple of days around the 16th, um, you know, using your head instead of your gut. And uh, Julia, I think you've got some Venus activity for us this month. Oh, yes. Hey, Sagittarius. So I want to talk about Venus for a few minutes. Venus is the planet of beauty and also relationships. And she moves into your eighth house on the third of this month, uh, which means that there's kind of a shift from uh, promoting sort of uh, the harmony of seventh house activity to building more and more intimacy with a partner if you are attached. So this could also be a time, because the eighth house is the house of shared resources, of, of kind of considering sharing more resources with a partner too. Like maybe you guys want to get a debit card together, or maybe you're thinking of taking out a mortgage together. Um, but there's just, there's just an urge to merge more deeply with a partner on all levels. And then Venus is going to go into your ninth house on the 27th. Um, and the ninth house is a much different vibe. It's, it's a very worldly house. It's a very international sort of open horizon horizons house. Um, so if you are in a relationship, you might feel like getting a lot more adventurous with your partner, trying new experiences out together, traveling together. And if you're single and traveling at this time, then this could be a good uh, period for finding a little holiday romance. Natha, what are you seeing? I love it. So let's start with Mars, because Mars this month for you is going to be in the ninth house for the whole month. And Mars is often about energy and action and planning and following through. And you were talking about some travel. And the ninth house definitely can bring you travel. So you might find that you are making some last-minute travel plans, that you're really um, – it could even mean that you're, you know, trying to find some new teachers, some new education to move forward on to bolster what you already know. Of course, we have Mercury retrograde also this month. And Mercury is going retrograde also in your ninth house. And, you know, they say, and, and I don't always believe this wholeheartedly, but they do say that travel can get, um, travel plans can go awry during a Mercury retrograde. So, you know, just make sure that you are crossing your T's and dotting your I's, that you're giving yourself enough time to make, um, you know, connecting flights and whatnot. Also, um, Mercury will go back into the eighth house on the 19th. So some of that stuff that Julia was talking about in terms of 
the urge to merge, the urge to um, sort of combine your resources, have conversations about it, like endless conversations, because Mercury wants us to go back and look at ways that we've communicated in the past that haven't worked. So, you know, you don't want to uh, redo those things that haven't worked. You want to find new and innovative ways to talk about it. And I think that's it. Jamie, do you have anything to add about that? Nice. Yeah, you know, um, I love to, uh, I love that you're talking to Sagittarius risers and Sagittarians about travel because, of course, you know, that's very appealing. And it just occurs to me that a lot of these planets that are in Cancer are going to be moving into Leo next month. And so uh, making those travel plans now, but sort of waiting to cement them until Mercury is direct again and planning to do the tra actual travel in August might be the best plan for you Sagittarians. Well, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching. Look for our August horoscope next month, and we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye.